All right, here's a quick reference to the code that we're going to be writing in this tutorial. If you want, you can pause it right now and copy this all down. There's multiple ways of getting input from the Unity input system. This is just one way, and I'm going to show you the setup real quick. So step one, go to the package manager window and import the input system. Step two is go over to your assets folder, right click, create, and then scroll all the way down and create an input actions and name it anything you want. I'm making a VR game, so I called it My VR Controls. And then you want to go to the inspector, click Generate C Sharp Class, and hit Apply. Then you double click it, and then it will open up this input actions window. And you can create an actions map that is basically like a category. Since I'm doing VR, I'm going to do one for right hand and one for left hand. So this is the right hand category for now. And then you create your actions. These are things that you want to happen in the game. In this game, it's going to shoot a gun when you pull the trigger. So create a new action called shoot. And then underneath, you can click the little drop down arrow to go to the bindings. You can have more than one binding for multiple different buttons doing the same thing. And I uh, went to path, XR controller, right hand, and then selected trigger button. Um, also, make sure that this is just set to the default button for this particular tutorial. Also, remember to click the save asset button. Um, and then the last step is anywhere in your scene, you're going to need an input action manager. Because I'm doing VR and I created an XR origin, there automatically was an input action manager component on the XR origin rig. Um, and you're just going to click on the plus and then drag and drop your input actions that you just created. And that is all of the setup that you need to do. And then inside of the input actions, you need to create actions for all of the different buttons that you want to have in your game. Um, so next, let's create a script. And let's just call it just something temporary as an example and call it player. And I'm going to open that up in Visual Studio. So the very first thing that we need is up here, we're going to do using unity engine dot input system. And then we want to create a variable that we can select in the inspector that's going to let us choose what button does what. So we're going to write public input action. Whoops. I can't type <laughs> input action reference. There we go and name it whatever you want. So because I called it shoot, I'm going to name it shoot. You call it shoot button. You can name it anything you want. Whoops. And then write a semicolon. So I'm going to save that and I'm going to show you what that looks like in the inspector real quick. So just as an example, let's create an empty game object and call it player. And let's drag and drop the player script into the inspector. And as you can see, it says shoot and we can click this button and drag the zoom out so that we can get it in a list form. And I have a whole bunch of other default uh, buttons from other VR stuff. But right here at the top, you can see the category or the action map that we created. And I called mine right hand. And then the button or the action I called shoot. So we're just going to select that, double click. And that's all of the setup that we need to do in Unity. So now let's go back to our script and actually learn how to use this. So first of all, real quick, and I covered this in another tutorial, um, in order to get either a zero or one, depending on whether or not we're pressing the button, we're just going to write shoot dot action dot read value, and then the type of value that we're trying to get. If you're using a joystick, you'd get a vector two, for example. But in this case, we want just either a zero or a one. So we're just going to say float. And then this right here is what we're going to need that uh, determines whether or not we are uh, a zero or one, depending on whether or not we're pressing down the trigger button. And um, I, we could write, whoops, debug.log and put that in a debug.log so that we can see it and test it. Or we can put it inside of an if statement like this and ask it if it does not equal zero, shoot. 
Um, so that is one way that we can do it. And also now if you want to know exactly when the button was pressed down or when the button was released is writing void. Um, we'll just call this uh, shoot down. Um, and we need in, I believe it's input action dot callback context and you can just call it context. We're not actually going to use this in this tutorial right now. There's definitely some cool things that you can do with this, uh, but we don't need this right now. Um, and we're just, uh, it, it, we need that there. Otherwise we're getting, gonna get an error message. And right here, I'm going to write debug, whoops, dot log. And we're going to write um, shoot down. And let's copy and paste this whole thing. And let's rename this to shoot up. And we'll have it give us the message shoot up. So now um, it's not going to work yet. There's one more step we need to do. But the goal is to in the console for us to be able to see uh, shoot down when we press down the button and shoot up when we release the button. All right, so now inside of void start, we need to write shoot dot action dot um, started. Um, you can also write um, dot performed. Um, they work differently in some cases, um, but in this tutorial, you can use either. Whoops, not serialize. We want. Ah, why can I not type? started there we go just like that and we're going to write plus equal shoot down just like that and so that's going to add this void to happen every time this event happens and we're going to do the same thing with up so it's going to be shoot dot action dot and then now we're going to write canceled and we're going to plus equal shoot up just like that um, so yeah there's a lot of complicated things you can do with this that are really tricky and useful um, but for now uh, this is just real quick how to get it working and I'm gonna go back into unity and I'm gonna open up my console window clear it and I'm gonna run the game all right now if I press the button down and I'm holding down the trigger on my VR controller right now, we see shoot down and then I let go and it says shoot up. So shoot down, shoot up, shoot down, shoot up. So yeah, so that is how we get basically the equivalent of get button down and get button up. Um, and also I'm using VR right now. If you're using VR, make sure you put your finger over the proximity sensor between the eyes on the headset in order to get all of the positional tracking and the buttons up and down. But if you're just using mouse and keyboard or a joystick, it should just work as normal. And real quick for the sake of demonstration, I'm going to say debug.log shoot hold. So that way we can know when we are holding down the trigger. So let's go back to Unity. And now when I hold the trigger, we should get one shoot down. And then it should just keep on saying shoot hold. And then we should get one shoot up. So that is now the equivalent of get button down, get button, and the get button up. So that is how to use the new Unity input system in a nutshell. And that's the tutorial. All right, I hope this tutorial was helpful. Uh, if you want and you have a Steam VR compatible headset, I would love it if you go check out my game Jet Island. It is open world and you can fly around. It's got crazy VR movement and physics and also giant boss fights and online co-op. And it is a ton of fun that's available now on Steam. And if you want to see the next game that I'm working on, I have a couple of little previews on my main channel. All right, until my next episode, I will see you later and keep making games.